Hello class, uh, for today um, I'm going to teach you guys of the graph, uh, trigonometric graphing when we're incorporating all of the amplitude, frequency, uh, amplitude, horizontal shift and vertical shift all combined together into one, t uh, one singular graph, okay? Alright, so um, first we're going to go over a couple of um, the basic uh, letter formats. So you will see questions always dealing with theirs. There's one thing that's missing which is called the frequency here. That will belong right here and you will eventually get to learn that um, next week. For now, we want to be absolutely certain that we're able to do these three things whenever we're given those types of questions. So, the very first thing is we learn the amplitude. That's basically the distance from the midline to how high or how low it's going to be. The phase shift is um, left or right um, shift, horizontal shift as we like to call it. And that is going to be mostly in pi over 2 or pi over 4 format, just to make it easier for you guys to do. Uh, vertical shift would be your k value up here. Um, that would be the how much you're moving up or down, but it will also be the same value as the midline. So for example, if we do sine of x plus 1, that means that the mid value would be at y is equal to 1, the horizontal value. So at 1, you're going to make the horizontal line, the midline. And that is going to be it. If it's a minus 2, then that's where it's going to be, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. Okay, so that's your graph transformation. Now, you will now see questions like these. Now, I will not give you a degree. I will give you uh, mostly in radians from this point onwards. But once you're even given degrees, you should be able to convert between uh, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 360 degrees, and so forth. Um, you'll be able to convert between the two. So here, if we take this and then if we convert into radians, we get pi over 4. Now you will have an amplitude, you will have a phase shift, and you will have a, a vertical shift. So when incorporating all of these three into one, so where do we start? So the very first thing that you need to start is to take a look at your k value or your midline. Since your midline is at positive 1, I always like to take a look at the k value and then take a look at the amplitude. Because it, these two should always give you your framework as to where you're going to start. So I am going to draw on the graph, let's say the midline is 1, so I'm going to draw my dashed line. I have specifically told you guys to practice this because it will help you. And then you move down to... Well, how do I know I move down to it? Because the amplitude is 2, right? And then you go up to because that's your high amplitude. So just like if you're practicing how to write like a letter, like letter A, for example, like in like one of those grid marks, you want to have those um, that little space in which how high or how low you're going to go before we actually jump the gun and actually do these questions. And then we're talking about sign here. But notice how we're moving left pi over 4. So what does that mean? If we are able to actually draw the chart out and say that uh, 0 um, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, which is what we like to call the five essential points, we know the value is 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Now, what happens is, is that all of these values, all of these x values, get shifted to the left. So I might just have to draw the table here. Um, Alright, so this is kind of hard to move here. So let's do this way. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to move each of these guys' values towards the left by pi over 4. So if you go from 0 left by pi over 4, I'm going to get negative pi over 4, which is this value right here. Okay, so at pi over 4, whatever that value was at 0, okay, which was the midpoint, right? So if I were to just do no phase shift at all, like no phase shift, my five values would be middle, max, middle, minimum, and then middle. That is what's going to be. But it's all of these five values will be shifted to the right. And each you know the increment is just one. So this point will move to the left and it will end up here. And that is the mid, the midpoint, or you know, between max among max, middle, middle, and minimum. Your middle point will happen at pi over four. Then this point will end up being here, which is your max. 
And that's going to happen here at positive pi over 4. I'm sorry, that's negative pi over 4. That's going to happen at positive pi over 4. Why? Well, because if you take this pi over 2 and move it to the left, that means I'm going to subtract pi over 4 to every single one of these x values. And that's why if I do 0 minus pi over 4, I get negative pi over 4. Well, what's pi over 2 minus pi over 4? It becomes pi over 4. This becomes 3 pi over 4, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So this value will happen here, which is 3 pi over 4, and you get the idea. Just like I told you yesterday, if drawing the original helps you, so for example, draw the one without the phase shift, and then use that as a reference guide, take those points to simply move it to the I'm sorry, it's this move, this is the point that moves to the right, right? Left, right? So take those values, can you erase that? And then just draw the new five points, and then you will get your then you will get your graph. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna erase the one that was the original one. Because that's not the one I wanna see. The one I want the what I want to see is this entire graph that incorporates the phase shift as well. Then I'm gonna do okay, since every time you're moving it, you can see how between the middle and the max, you move it by two increments. So next two increments I'm gonna have middle, a minimum. Next two increments I'm gonna have middle. Next two increments I'm gonna have a maximum. So that is what's gonna be looking like for your new sine graph, incorporating every single component that we have been talking about so far. Okay, let's do one more example. Or actually, two more examples before I actually let you off and be on your own. Now, on the negative 3 sine theta minus pi over 2 minus 1. In these particular cases, what you're going to what you're going to do here is that you're going to worry about again, the very first thing was k value and the second thing was the a value. You want your framework to always be established in the first place. So I'm going to go to negative 1. Why? Because that's your k value. And then your amplitude is 3 and 3 above and below. So max, min. Always establish your mid, max, and min framework every single time. Then you do not want to worry about the phase shift now. Let's just draw the original and see what we get. The original here is that it's negative sign. So that means we don't we start from the middle, but then the next value at pi over 2 is going to go down to minimum, middle, maximum, and then middle. So I'm going to get a graph that looks like this. And then same opposite direction that will look like this, so that would be my wave. This would be negative 3 sine of theta minus 1. Now if I apply the phase shift of moving it to the right by pi over 2, that means this point now ends up being here, 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 and here. Because you can see how each of those points has moved. And then I'm going to apply the same thing to all of these points. And then now if I connect the black dots here, I get my new wave. Or I could probably add a finishing touch, probably putting a point right there, and then do it this way, and then I'll get my new graph. So it essentially looks like a cosine graph in a way. And yes, you're right, it is a cosine graph. But you know, it's you could also represent it as pi shifting it to the right because I told you how sine and cosine graph looks almost identical except that it's just moved a little bit to the left or to the right. So this would be your new graph, negative 3 sine of theta minus pi over 2 minus 1. Okay? And you can see how every two increments is pi over 2. So you, like I told you before to do that way, either way is fine. For me, I always like to have, I want to be kind of certain so I, I want to have the original graph and then take those points, move it to the right, and then get my answer. Okay, the last question that I'm going to go over for today is y is equal to 4 cosine of theta plus pi over 2 plus 2. You will be getting these types of graphs, and I'm not going to give you any some sort of a, a graph paper whatsoever. That the reason for that is because it depends on the scenarios of the um, graphs, like for this one. Some of you guys I know for definitely will complain, well, it only goes up to positive 4 and negative 4 for y value. But if you take a look at this, your mid value is at 2, you go up 4, down 4, you will reach 6 and negative 2. So then how do you graph that, right? So in order to counteract that, um, you just want to then create for yourself 
your own graph right here. Draw a Y grid and draw the X grid. And I need you to practice doing these on your own without having any assistance from the graph paper. Because I know it goes up to six, you might want to make sure that your increment, or you can just simply erase the X tick mark. Well, maybe I should just erase this from the get-go. And then make my Y scale positive a little higher. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I go down negative two. You want to make sure that these two high and low values, the framework should always occur within the given frame. So now, if I am given this type of graph where I have four and positive two, I'm going to establish my framework at positive two. And then my min and my max. There, that's it. Okay, so this is how I would first draw it. And I need you to practice on this on your homework questions as well. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to establish my x for x uh, coordinates, like x, um, how much increment that I need to move up by. Normally, ca normal cases is that we always use pi over 2, and you will see why we're going to be using that. So for the sake of doing all of these problems, I need you to keep these as pi over 2s. and then go in the opposite direction. That's negative pi. Later on, we'll be able to, uh, I will introduce you to what if the phase shift is not always re restricted to any of these values, then what you're gonna do then is you're going to be utilizing uh, different types of framework to do. Um, that I'm not gonna teach you as of now. I just need you to be solid on doing this for today. Let's take it one thing at a time. Now, um, what we're gonna do here now is I am going to um, just draw four cosine of theta plus two. Now I start from the max because cosine graph always starts from the max. Then I go to pi over two, which is middle. middle. At pi it's at min. 3 pi over 2, it's at middle, and 2 pi, it's at max, so then I'm going to graph like this. On the other hand side, middle, minimum, middle, and maximum. Guys, remember, at pi, it reaches middle, so it, you don't go to the x-axis, you don't, you don't plot it here, okay? So here, I'm going to draw my other, other part, and it looks like a W, right? Now I'm going to move everything to the everything to the left. I'm going to move everything to the left. So here I'm going to take this and then move to move it to where the pi over 2 was. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to pop increment right there. Move it to the left. 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 And then well the the next part will just move it but here my new graph will look something like this. Okay? And then I'm just going to simply take those values and then move it each of those increments. Then you will see that in the black color, I'm having the correct answer of the entire picture frame of what I need to have. So this would be your four cosine of theta plus pi over two plus two. Okay, all right, so um, we can do this in many different ways. A lot of teachers teach it to you guys. Um, if this way does not work where you don't want to draw the original graph and things like that, you guys can always draw like a table and see what happens. So the way that I always like to do um, is this way. But if some of you guys don't want to do it this way and try something else, then you can also try this way. So I'm going to draw y is equal to 4 cosine of data. Uh, what was it again? Plus pi over 2. And then um, plus 2. So just like before, um, I'm going to draw the x and y grid. You guys know that it goes up to 6 and goes down to negative 2, and it, the midline is at positive 2. So, all right, just 5. Uh, that's not it. That's not up to scale. So 4, 3, 2, 1. And I'm going to erase this line just to avoid confusion. Negative 1, negative 2. Okay. Just bear with me on this one. So I, I feel like all of all. All of you guys are comfortable with just drawing the framework because I feel like everybody should do that on a normal basis. But now let's say that you don't want to draw the original and you just want to go straight to the actual actual grid. Um, pi over two, negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi over two, and then negative two pi. 
and you, you get the x uh, coordinates as such. Now, let's say that you understand that when theta is 0, your y value is 1. Okay? And then now everything moves to the left by pi over 2. So whatever this value is, now it becomes a negative pi over 2, and that's where the 1 starts. Okay? If you have noticed from this point onwards, like every single increment is simply 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. So every single time you just move up by pi over 2. So here, if that's where you start, you only want to wear, worry about where you start from in which you kind of move it to the left. And every other increment from that, it's uh, 0, pi over 2 pi, and then 3 pi over 2. And then all of these values then, it shifts. I, I mean, it just follows the same pattern. 1, 0, uh, negative 1, 0, 1. All of these values just keeps on repeating itself over and over and over again. So all I like to do here is that establish where you start always. Always establish where you start. So that's where it zeroes um, the middle value, or I'm sorry, it's cosine, so that's where the maximum value happens, right? And each increment is pi over 2. Uh, for every increment that you have drawn, I know that in the previous graph, every increment was pi over 4, but that's the beauty of drawing your own graph, is that you can be flexible with how you want to draw this. Every single increment that you go up by, I, go, I switch between max, middle, and min. So when I move to the right one, I know that I have to be falling down. And then from the next increments, I know I have to be falling down all the way to the minimum. And then from the next increments, I know I, know I have to bounce back up, then bounce back up at 3 pi over 2. And then you can see how the, if you were to just follow the same pattern, and at negative 3 pi over 2, I'm going to go down. At negative 2 pi, I'm going to bounce back up. It will be the exact same graph as, as, as if you see here. Notice how they're exactly the same. And when you're drawing this by hand, I know it can kind of get messy and it can kind of get a little overwhelming. As long as I see that these five essential points and these five essential points from the left hand side and the right hand side, they're all in the correct tick marks. In other words, if they're on the if they fall under this uh, the correct x value, then I don't think you should have any problem with drawing the uh, trick graphs whatsoever. Okay. Later on, when we incorporate period and frequency it will get more complicated as if you draw these by hand and you have to, you have to draw this by hand because I cannot give you a singular graph paper that will fit the period, the, the um, amplitude and all those things at, at the same time. Okay, so please um, take a look at these uh, couple of examples and I hope these help. Make sure you do your homework. There's only, only gonna be two questions to do. And that's going to be it for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to go over more questions like this as a review. And Friday, you'll be taking a quiz. Thank you, and have a good day.